Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizing committee of this uh, very nice event. Uh, I'm very happy to be part of this uh, AstroCon uh, that is virtual this year, uh, and um, it's the fourth one uh, that is organized by the Qatar Universities and the Qatar Universities Alumni Association. Uh, so it's a great pleasure for me to be with you today. And um, today I'll be talking to you about um, my uh, work uh, on about uh, nitrites. Uh, so it's uh, it will be uh, a lecture uh, about nitrites and the interest of uh, working on nitrites and how nitrites may be uh, a lead. Uh, a leader for development in, of science in general uh, in the Arab countries. So um, I'll be happy to answer all your questions at the end and um, feel free to ask in Arabic, in French or in English. Um, thank you so much for to our, the organizers uh, for the invitation. Okay, so Let's begin by uh, the what, what will be uh, what I will talk about. Uh, so I have I will in the beginning I will uh, speak about the scientific interest of meteorites. Uh, then what is a meteorite and how to identify it. Uh, then uh, I will talk about meteorites uh, of Arab countries and uh, Morocco as an example. Uh, then I will be talking about the strategy that we adopted to promote meteorites and planetary science in Morocco uh, since 20 years. And uh, I will finish by a summary and uh, recommendations. Okay, so let's begin by the scientific interests of meteorites. If I ask all of you about the age of Earth, and the age of the solar system. Maybe uh, you know that Earth has uh, four point about six billion years old, but uh, what you probably don't know is that the age of Earth hasn't been measured by uh, directly on rock, uh, Earth rocks. Uh, the age of uh, the Earth uh, is given by the collection and the measurement of the age uh, of rocks but are, that are not terrestrial. It's by uh, measuring extraterrestrial rocks that we have this age. Actually, all the rocks uh, on Earth are, uh, are not pristine. They, they are all um, big uh, experienced uh, the uh, plate tectonics, uh, the alteration, etc. So there is no rock on Earth with 4.6 billion years. But uh, when we measure the uh, age of uh, most uh, meteorites, here you have this um, geochrome that has been measured on 1954 by uh, Patterson. Uh, even it was uh, more than uh, about 70 years ago, but we still have the same, no, uh, no new measurements have uh, been done to, um, to change this, uh, uh, this um, uh, age. So in the solar system for Earth, and for all the other um, bodies, we know their age by the measurements of the meteorites. And meteorites, for most of them, they are pristine and they didn't change. So this is one of the most important things that we know uh, on the scientific level uh, by working on meteorites. Then we can also see 
for example, another interest that is very, uh, that we, we, it's a work that is very new. Um, so uh, here we have, actually we know that um, uh, the solar system and the, uh, the, the uh, our uh, solar system has some components that are not um, original because uh, our sun is a very is a small uh, star and is a young star so it could not have produced uh, elements more than uh, hydrogen and helium so um, we know that the solar system is ha ha um, got some uh, elements, all the elements that uh, are from the um, Mendeleev the table, the, uh, they are inherited from uh, an explosion of supernova. But we didn't know exactly how to prove this. And uh, very um, in, in January uh, 2020, there was a work published on one meteorite that is carbonaceous chondrite, where some elements that have uh, more than 4.6, and that is about 7.5 billion years have been found in this meteorite. So those grains, it's dust grains uh, that have been found and uh, uh, the dated. And they found, the, 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 this group of researchers, found that there are different ages in, uh, of different uh, dust grains in this meteorite. So we proved by this way, they proved by this way, but that uh, our solar system have, uh, it's proved that, that uh, the all elements more than uh, helium have been uh, given to the solar system by the explosion of a supernova. Another important interest of uh, working on meteorites is that uh, if I ask you about the origin of water on Earth, uh, actually uh, Earth, when it formed, didn't have all the water that uh, it has now. And so uh, it's, uh, we know that most uh, water that is uh, uh, covering the, the Earth uh, surface uh, on oceans uh, is now proven that it's uh, uh, for uh, the most important part of the of it is uh, coming from uh, a cometary origin uh, because comets are uh, composed by uh, mostly uh, frozen water. Uh, plus dust. So uh, it is proven now that uh, the water in uh, Earth is extraterrestrial, has extraterrestrial origin. And we can see this in the carbonaceous chondrite. Again, those meteorites are absolutely fantastic uh, because they contain uh, a lot of water. They may contain uh, about 20% of water. And uh, those meteorites are originated from uh, comets. Uh, other interest is uh, about the carbon, uh, organic carbon. Uh, actually, uh, it's the question about the origin of, uh, of um, life on Earth and origin of life uh, out, out of the Earth. Um, here, for example, we have uh, a study that has been published in the Martian meteorite TC that uh, fell in Morocco. I will talk about it later. And uh, so in this meteorite, in these Martian meteorites, they have uh, that the, the authors of this work uh, have found some organic carbon. And this is uh, something that is important to know about uh, the origin of the uh, organic matter uh, in March, but in the solar system in general. And uh, again, uh, last December, 
in um, carbonaceous chondrite, it has been um, proven that it contains extraterrestrial sugar, uh, sugar, ribose, and other sugars. And so that's uh, proof uh, also that uh, the origin of um, organic matter uh, in Earth is, is uh, extraterrestrial and uh, has been uh, uh, has been imported to earth by extraterrestrial rocks another interest is about the origin of the moon uh, and the history of formation of the solar system and how the solar system how the um, how the planets get their positions in the solar system and we know by working on meteorites that uh, there is um, an episode of uh, what, what we call the late heavy bombardment after the formation of the solar system. A few uh, million years after, there was a very big collisions uh, that occurred and those collisions uh, put the planets in the, in, of the solar system in the uh, place where they are now with Mercury, uh, Venus, uh, etc. And during this very explosive and very um, high uh, collisions, um, the proto-Earth has been, uh, has been uh, 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 broken by, the, by a proto, another protoplanet that has the size of Mars. And a part of this proto-Earth has been removed to form the moon and the, what remain form the actual Earth. And this is also uh, the uh, occasion to, to talk about the impacts uh, that are on the surface of all solar uh, uh, of the all um, the planets and all uh, rocky bodies of the solar system that uh, most of them are occurring have occurred during the late heavy bombardment but uh, there are others that are still occurring now uh, something that you also know about is the mass extinctions and uh, the most known one is the uh, disappearing of the uh, of dinosaurs from the from the earth uh, dinosaurs has been uh, living on earth for much 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 longer than uh, the humans uh, it was uh, during millions and millions of years and they just disappear uh, 65 million years ago and uh, by a catastrophic event. And now uh, it has been proven that uh, the, 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 the extinction of uh, dinosaurs from the, from the earth uh, was um, made during uh, a very big uh, fall of an asteroid that occurred in uh, the Mexico here, uh, and it formed the uh, it formed the the Chicxulub crater, and this crater is uh, partly uh, covered by water, but it's about two hundred uh, ki kilometers of size, and uh, as you. See, you see here there was uh, a study that um, showed that during this impact, this huge impact, there was a mega tsunami uh, uh, with a wave of uh, 1,500 meters high and with a speed of 20 centimeters by second. And sediments uh, in this area have been removed uh, 6,000 kilometers from far from the impact site. So it was a huge impact. And also there was the work that um, uh, made the, the uh, modelization of the wave that uh, has been uh, 
created and also to show what was the direction and the angle of the impactor that created this um, this impact crater and um, so it uh, has been uh, proven that uh, the, this uh, impact uh, has been uh, uh, a result of uh, an impactor that uh, has a velocity of 17 kilometers by second and um, density of 2.6 gram by uh, a meter um, uh, square and uh, the uh, and the angle was about 60 uh, 60 degrees um, here it's a work that has been published in 2015 about the uh, the relationship between mass extinctions and uh, big falls and catastrophic events. And here you have a basalt flow. Uh, the Earth experienced uh, many uh, explosions of volcanoes with a lot of basalt and uh, but also there was the, those are showing where was the craters big craters and max extensions and you see here those red uh, dash uh, lines uh, show that there is a, a very good uh, relationship and uh, there is very good cor correlation between mass extinctions and big craters on Earth. And that uh, proved that uh, actually uh, mass extinctions, I talked about uh, uh, dinosaurs, but uh, Earth uh, experienced many other uh, mass extinctions and most of them are related to uh, a big uh, catastrophic event of um, uh, a big fall of an asteroid and also there is an interest of searching of life of the origin of life and searching of life out of earth and here we have this is a martian meteorite that is called allen hill uh, 84001 and this uh, in this meteorite uh, it has been found the researchers on um, uh, 1984 found this um, form of bacteria. Uh, it's a Martian meteorite and uh, it has been um, uh, presented as the first uh, proof of extraterrestrial life in March. But actually it turned that uh, after when uh, the work has been uh, going further, uh, it has been uh, shown that uh, this was not uh, extraterrestrial uh, uh, origin. It hasn't extraterrestrial origin, but it, has, uh, it was a, a terrestrial contamination. But it's only to uh, tell about uh, some aspects of the interest of working of meteorites, a lot, a lot of interest. Uh, let's move now to uh, to present what are meteorites and um, how we can uh, identify them. So, what is a meteorite? A meteorite is an extraterrestrial rock. Uh, we know that there are. Uh, we do the difference between falls and finds. Falls are meteorites that are seen by uh, a witness people. Uh, you have humans that uh, have seen the meteorites coming on earth and then it is collected after the fall. Um, for falls we have uh, every year we may receive in the nomenclature committee of meteorological society that I'm a member of uh, between five to ten new falls every year. This is the small part of meteorite that we know on Earth, but the biggest part are, is formed by finds, and finds are all meteorites that arrive uh, to the surface of Earth during, during uh, thousands, millions of years, and that accumulates on the surface of Earth. 
Why is it so important? I show you in the beginning that there are a lot of interest and this is very important because uh, meteorites are a wonderful substitute to the space missions return sample. Uh, actually, the only body that we know very well because we had rocks that, are, uh, that have been uh, returned to Earth is the moon because of the Apollo missions uh, that went to the moon and that was back with, uh, uh, with uh, many uh, kilograms of moon rocks. But we don't have uh, so much material coming from other uh, rocky bodies of the solar system. We have the Stardust mission that collected a few uh, dust from a cometary origin. And we have the mission, Hayabusa mission, that uh, came back with a few micrograms of uh, asteroid. And we have another mission uh, that is now Hayabusa 2, that is now uh, collecting a sample and going back to Earth. But so there are a very, very limited material coming from uh, out of uh, the Earth. Uh, uh, by the space missions. So it's very, very important to have those rocks that give the material to work on and that is coming from uh, outside of Earth. Okay, let's see where they are from. So it's rocks. So they are coming from uh, rocky bodies in the solar system. It's, uh, it may be Mercury, Venus, Earth, uh, the Moon and Mars and the asteroid belt. And then we have those, um, the gaseous uh, planets. So it's impossible to have meteorites from those, but we can have, most meteorites are coming from the asteroid belt. Uh, some of them are coming from March. Some of them are coming from the moon, our, the Earth moon. And some of them are coming from comets. And it's not, yet proven that uh, meteorites are coming from Venus or Mercury, even uh, it has been um, uh, proposed by some researchers. How we do the classification? We classify meteorites by their origin and by the uh, body uh, that uh, give these meteorites. We have primitive meteorites that are mostly uh, chondrite because uh, they contain this very pristine uh, uh, spherules I will talk about after. And so we have primitive meteorites and we have very differentiated meteorites. Differentiated meteorites are coming from big bodies, uh, coming from uh, mostly from planets or protoplanets. And so they are, uh, they contain iron meteorites. Iron meteorites are very similar to the core of the Earth. Uh, and so uh, they are coming from the uh, core of a planet that has been broken. Uh, we have the mixed meteorites mix that are uh, similar to the mantle of Earth. Um, and then we have lunars, Martian, uh, econrites, and econrites that are coming from one big asteroid that is Vesta. Uh, and they are very similar to the crusts of the, uh, of the Earth. So we have uh, primitive meteorites that are coming from small bodies that didn't differentiate uh, in the solar system and differentiated meteorites that are coming from much bigger uh, rock, rocky uh, bodies that have been experiencing differentiation. And differentiation may uh, uh, mean that uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are migration of the metal that uh, is uh, in here mixed with the chondroids. The metal is uh, moving and going to the uh, core of the body. This this is the, major, the, the differentiation. Uh, how to identify it? Uh, actually, meteorites are, are known uh, by uh, humans for a long time, and uh, there are uh, 
the first iron that has been used by uh, the humans was the extraterrestrial iron because iron meteorites are composed by uh, exclusively by iron and uh, nickel and some uh, uh, metals uh, and it was easy to extract this metal, uh, comparing to the, the, the it, it was even before the, during the bronze, the, the bronze age. Uh, and uh, this uh, is much uh, easier than extracting iron from the, from minerals, uh, what is uh, used now. Um, so this is the Tutankhamun bag that is made by uh, iron uh, meteorites and even this uh, artifact have been uh, proven that it's uh, from the Ugarit and uh, in Syria and it was for, um, uh, formed and uh, confectioned by uh, 1500 1, uh, before Christ. Uh, what happen when you have a meteorite coming to Earth. So uh, this is the Chelyabinsk uh, event that occurred on February 2013. And you see that it was in seven in the morning and you see the light that is very bright. And two minutes later, uh, you uh, will see that uh, after the light, you have the sound and the wave that came and uh, there was about 2,000 people injured, not by the meteorite fall itself, but by the uh, effect of the of the uh, wave. As you say, uh, people have seen this very big light, and they they went close to the windows to see what happened, and then. Uh, the windows has been broken and people, people were injured by this. Okay, so um, uh, can we predict uh, meteorite falls? No, it's unpredictable. There were, uh, on the human history, there was uh, only, and the, 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 uh, there was only two events that have been followed for a long time. One was on uh, 2018, and it uh, uh, fell in Botswana. Uh, it has been, the, the meteor was uh, followed by uh, many, uh, uh, by many uh, observatories in the world, uh, nine hours before the fall. And the, the first one was uh, on 2008 and it was, uh, it fell in Sudan. It has been, um, uh, followed by observatories on all over the world during 10 uh, hours and uh, it fell in Sudan and the name of this meteorite is al Mahatta Sita and it was it, it's a very important one a very specific one how can we identify meteorites so meteorites are uh, identified by different uh, uh, techniques uh, the first thing is that we see we see uh, the the rock uh, by the eyes, and uh, if it's a fresh fall, we have this black fusion crust that is covering the meteorite because of the when the meteorite is crossing the Earth uh, atmosphere, it's burned. The external part of the meteorite is totally melted and burned, and uh, it puts a very small inframit millimetric uh, crusts covering the, uh, the rock. Um, it's black because it's burned. Uh, but um, on, when the meteorite is on Earth for a long time, the fusion crusts may, be, uh, may disappear by alteration. Uh, we have, for most meteorites, we have the presence of controls. The controls are the spherules that are formed uh, during the very beginning formation of the solar system. So m m uh, many meteorites and most meteorites contain those uh, uh, chondrules. Uh, chondrules don't exist in any uh, earth rock. So it's very specific to the meteorites. We have also the presence of 
pure metal and pure sulfide, uh, native and pure metal and sulfide, and those metal and sulfide don't exist in any uh, earth rock. We have also in the surface of uh, the, uh, the meteorites when they are fresh, the presence of regmagalith. Those are the, like uh, fingerprints, uh, and they are produced by uh, the ablation of a small part of the meteorite when it crosses the um, atmosphere, Earth atmosphere. Uh, we have, uh, of course, other techniques that we use, and one of them is the, the collection and the measurements of the oxygen isotopes of the rock. And we, we have here uh, actually every uh, family of uh, meteorites has a specific uh, signature, oxygen isotope signature, and this is very different from the terrestrial, terrestrial fractionation line. We have here the terrestrial fractionation line, and this line uh, contains all what is existing on Earth. All rocks, water, everything on Earth has this uh, delta uh, or 17 uh, versus delta or 18, uh, and the all uh, Earth components have uh, are on this um, specific fractionation line. And you see here that uh, all other groups of meteorites are very different, except the Moon. Before, as I said before, the Moon has the same origin than the Earth. Uh, they have uh, the same uh, uh, origin together. Uh, and there is one group that is Instatite Conrite that uh, uh, are, have also the same uh, fractionation line. Uh, the petrography, I will talk about it very, very quickly. It's the same minerals that we have in the magmatic rocks. We have, uh, we have, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, something like basalt, uh, peridotite, etc., and iron meteorites, and sorry, iron. And on the minerals, we have olivines, pyroxenes, plagioclades. Those are very similar to what we have on Earth rocks. Uh, metal and sulfides are specific. They are not existing in this form in terrestrial rocks. And then we have potassium feldspurs and accessory minerals, but most of them are very similar to what we have on Earth. Where do we collect meteorites? Most meteorites are collected in the desert, uh, hot or cold. Cold desert is Antarctica, and in Antarctica we have very um, a big. Uh, the bigger number of meteorites known on Earth have been collected in Antarctica by science scientists uh, during uh, scientific missions. And uh, as you see, uh, meteorites are, are dark and uh, we have uh, uh, on, on the background that is clear, so it's uh, easy, sorry to uh, find them. And on uh, hot deserts, so you have the Sahara, you have the Arabic Peninsula, and you have Chile, where, uh, as you see, uh, meteorites are uh, black or are dark. And when you are in the hot desert, you may have uh, a, a clear background, and it's easier to find them. The other uh, the other explanation of uh, why meteorites are uh, collected mostly in hot and cold deserts is that in the deserts there are a very low um, part of uh, water, so uh, there is no alteration. All meteorites that are filling on this area, a uh, desertic area, uh, are uh, preserved because there is a very uh, uh, low uh, amount of water, so the alteration is very, very, very slow. How do we uh, do make a, a meteorite official? Because if you find a rock and you say, okay, it's a meteorite, it may be a meteorite, but you cannot work on it, you cannot publish on it, 
if you don't prove that it's a nitrite and if you don't publish it in a specific bulletin that I will talk about. So the first step is to do the analysis to be sure that it's a nitrite. This analysis allows you to classify the nitrite. Then you have to give a mass reference to the a lab that is recognized by the Meteorological Society. And uh, for example, in Morocco, the only lab recognized is uh, the one of the Hassan Sekhet University of Casablanca. Then you submit your meteorite to the nomenclature committee of the Meteorological Society with the classification and the name. And this uh, committee is formed by 12 experts in all over the world. And those experts uh, analyze your classification and your submission. And then they vote uh, about the name and the classification. And when it is accepted by the nomenclature committee, it's published in the Meteorological Bulletin. Meteorological Bulletin is like this, is a publication, but now we have uh, something that is uh, complete in the Meteorological Bulletin. It's a database and it's open to all of you. You can go to this database. It's the Meteorological Bulletin database. And if you want to know if a meteorite is official or not, you, have, you can go to this database and you have uh, many, um, you can uh, search by countries, by classes, by uh, uh, name, uh, by uh, year, etc. And if you don't find your meteorite in the meteorological bulletin database, that means that it's not official. And um, for example, here you have uh, the TCINT meteorites uh, uh, that is published in the meteorological bulletin. Let's move now to the meteorites of Arab countries and Morocco. So uh, just uh, that those statistics um, are from uh, November 19, um, 2018, 19. Uh, so we have uh, uh, about uh, 20,000 20, meteorites that are uh, officially uh, found or recognized uh, from the Arab countries. So it's a big number. Uh, it's uh, about uh, one uh, third of the total meteorite known on Earth, so uh, it's, a, it's an important, very important number. We have 62 forms uh, in the Arab countries, uh, and all the others are fines. We have also, I'm oh, sorry, we have um, uh, 11 impact craters in the Arab countries, four of them are in Algeria. Uh, we have all categories of meteorites that are found in the Arab countries, and most of them are very rare, uh, Martian, lunar, ingrides, etc. And if we go to the uh, meteorites coming from Morocco and surrounding countries, we have um, the very rare meteorites uh, are coming from this area, 86% uh, of ingrides, 90% uh, of brachinite, 77% of Martian meteorites, 71% of lunar meteorites are coming from Morocco and surrounding countries. I will give a very quick uh, uh, examples and very short examples of some meteorites coming from our countries. I will begin by Oman because uh, this uh, uh, country is one of the most important of the world. Uh, we have uh, 4,315 um, uh, approved meteorites coming from Oman. Uh, as you see here, we have uh, Sahil Uhaymir, uh, SAU005, uh, uh, Martian Shergotites. Um, here, I will stop a little bit to talk about those names, Sahil Uhaymir, Dofar, Dofar, and you see that uh, there are two Sahel uh, Uhaymer, 005 and 085. Uh, um, uh, this is uh, what we call a dense collection area. When you have in, in a, a place many meteorites coming from the same area, we can give them the a dense collection name, the name of the area followed by a number. So this is the case of Tufar from uh, uh, and Sahel Uhaymer, etc. Uh, in, from Zofar in, in Oman, we have uh, 100, 2000, uh, 1,223 
uh, nitrites coming from this area, etc. So, uh, Roman is a specific case because there are plenty of threat collected in uh, this in the Romani desert, and uh, they are all uh, uh, from dense collection areas. I will take uh, the second example is Algeria with uh, about 2,000 meteorites at, uh, that uh, are approved and recognized. Uh, there are nine ports in Algeria. Those are the official numbers because uh, probably um, there are much more meteorites uh, collected, but uh, they are not submitted and or they are not submitted by the uh, with the origin of. Uh, the country, so uh, it it cannot be uh, uh, statistically in uh, originated from the uh, country. Uh, again, you have the dense collection area of Asfar, the dense collection area of Adrar uh, and El Achan. It's and uh, the latest one is Northwest Africa, and you see here that uh, this. Meteorites has the name of NWA followed by a number. And this is a big problem that I will talk about a little bit after uh, on the nomenclature of meteorites coming from this area of the world. Uh, Libya is also has a big desert and uh, has plenty of meteorites, 1,500. And uh, now I think that we have much more and we have now another form from Libya that is not yet uh, official, but uh, we have uh, one official fall and two, uh, and another one that is uh, still not official. We have three impact craters in Libya and uh, in the same, uh, uh, very close to what happened in the other countries, Arab countries, we have uh, Dar al Ghani, this collection area, Hamad al Hamra, etc., where there are plenty of meteorites coming from this area. Let's move now to the meteorites coming from Morocco. And uh, Morocco uh, is located in the very uh, western part of the Arab countries. And so it has a very unique situation in the world because we have a large desert. This desert is, uh, uh, in, there are plenty of nomads living in the desert. And now we have a big number of meteorite hunters uh, that is knowing about meteorites that are uh, become experts on uh, recognition of meteorites. And so it makes this area one of the most important places in the world on meteorite collection. Uh, historically, the first meteorite found in Morocco is an iron, Mire. The name of this meteorite is Mir. It's about 80 kilograms. And it's uh, exposed in the Museum of the Ministry of Energy and Mining in Rabat. Uh, the first uh, reported fall in Morocco is Duarmrila. It's uh, uh, on 1932. Uh, this meteorite is uh, physically uh, in Paris, in the Museum of uh, Natural History of Paris. And we have, uh, an, uh, these statistics are from November, last November. Uh, now we have more than uh, uh, 13,000 uh, meteorites that are collected from Morocco and surrounding countries. Uh, as I told before, we have this problem of NWA nomenclature. Uh, so most of those meteorites don't have uh, exact coordinates. And to give a name of meteorites, the meteorites are, uh, have the names of the place where they are collected. And in this area of the world, uh, nomads and hunters collect the meteorites and they don't give the coordinates. So uh, we have the meteorites that we know that it's from this area, but we don't know exactly where, where they are from. We don't have coordinates. So it's very difficult to give them names. Uh, so the Nomenclature Committee of the Meteorological Society in 1999, when uh, they get the first meteorites like this, uh, they decide to give them the name of Northwest Africa followed by a number. This is something that we don't like and we, we were working for 20 years to try to improve this situation because it's um, 
something that uh, is um, not good for our meteorites because uh, when you go, you give uh, you give uh, NWA followed by a number, it's uh, uh, it, it doesn't give to the meteorite the, the prestige that it, it it should have. So we worked for 20 years to try to document the maximum of meteorites uh, in Morocco, and at least for all falls occurring in Morocco, we have the documentation and a proper locality name instead of NWA name. So this, uh, those meteorites are very important because it's a material with a very good weathering preservation. It's easily accessible for, the, for all researchers in all over the world. And, uh, as it's very uh, easy to have meteorites coming from this area, uh, comparing, for example, to Antarctica, uh, if you want to have a sample of meteorites collected in Antarctica, it's very, very, very difficult because it belongs to uh, the countries and it belongs to the scientific collections and uh, it's uh, it's not easy to, um, to ask for a sample to do analysis. Uh, but for all meteorites coming from this area and also for the Arab, uh, other Arab countries, they are, they are very easily accessible for the scientific uh, researchers from all over the world. And so, uh, as it's easily accessible, uh, that's improved the knowledge of meteoritics in all over the world. And it contributes to more than 50% of publications on meteoritics and planetary science in all over the world. So it plays a fundamental role on the knowledge of uh, the history of the solar system and the history of the universe uh, in general. Um, we tried to do uh, in Morocco a work that has been, the, uh, and it was a PhD work uh, for my PhD student, Maria Bulhris. She defended her uh, thesis on September last, uh, last year. And we tried to um, calculate the density of meteorites in the Sahara uh, basing, based on the work uh, that we made, uh, the fieldwork that we made in Morocco and in Tunisia. And this work was during six years and uh, it allowed uh, my PhD student to have this uh, results of a density of meteorite uh, estimated in the Sahara that is uh, that vary from point, uh, 0.2 to 1 meteorite by kilometer square. And uh, the mass of the average mass is uh, about 26 grams. And uh, if we go for 2.0.2 uh, uh, meteorites by kilometer square, uh, we still have 60,000 meteorites to collect in the Sahara. And if we go to one meteorite by kilometer square, we still have 700,000 um, meteorites that are. Uh, that we may still collect in the Sahara. So it's just to show that the potential of meteorites that we still have uh, may collect in the Sahara is very uh, big. Uh, another aspect of the work that we are going, doing in Morocco, we, uh, it's another PhD uh, that uh, has been uh, uh, defended uh, under my supervision in uh, July 2019. Uh, uh, it was about um, searching of uh, impact craters in Morocco. So we found the first uh, impact structure in Morocco that is in, uh, it's in the high Atlas Mountains, it's the Agudal meteorites, and you see the Agudal impact uh, structure. Uh, and it was very interesting because the first, what we found is um, iron meteorite, and then after uh, we found uh, those uh, rocks, this is terrestrial rocks that have experienced the shock uh, that gave the uh, impact structure. Those are called shatter cones and shatter cones are the, uh, are the proof that uh, there was an impact uh, crater 
uh, in this area. So we have the first uh, impact st structure in Morocco and uh, there are many publications uh, and one PhD and also what is nice is that uh, there is we proved that there is no relationship between the iron meteorite that we found in this area and the formation of the impact structure so two uh, four events that are in the same area but uh, not disconnect uh, on the time uh, this is something that we are very proud of, is uh, a meteorite that fell in Morocco on July 2011. And it was a very special meteorite because it was a Martian meteorite. We give the name to this meteorite of t because of the name of the area it, it, it fell. And this was the, only the fifth uh, Martian meteorite fall. Uh, that, that have been seen by uh, humans during the fall. It has been collected very quickly after the fall. And then uh, we could do a, a very interesting work on this meteorite uh, that we had the privilege to uh, conduct. And uh, as you see, it has been uh, published in Science uh, Magazine. Um, I was the first author and with 20 other uh, we were 20 um, uh, authors, and it was a consortium of uh, authors. Uh, and what we could, uh, why we, we have uh, this paper in science is because we could prove that uh, all rocks that are similar to this meteorite are really from uh, uh, Martian origin. And we proved that when this meteorite has been removed from the surface of March, the surface of March was, was or weight. It was uh, it, it had fluids. So this is a, the area where this meteorite has been collected. And as you see, we are in nowhere in the south of Morocco. It's 70 kilometers from Tata, and it's the very big desert, and uh, it's very very difficult to go there. And when we came there, when we arrived there, there was uh, thousands of people looking. Uh, were very surprised uh, looking for the El Dorado, for the, the, the meteorites. And this is uh, something that we see in all our field missions. Uh, Chistin's meteorite is very important because it, uh, we had this uh, publication and there are plenty of other publications that are still ongoing uh, with the work that is done uh, in this meteorite. For example, we have a lab the largest impact excavation, uh, nature, uh, our publications in the meteorites and planetary science, etc. And here, that's something that I'm very happy with is the name of a new mi new mineral that has been uh, that has been discovered in Mar in uh, Tisint meteorite. And this new mineral has the name of Tisint. So. Uh, we have the name of the Moroccan name of TC to the meteorite, and it's also Moroccan name of the new mineral. Um, actually, uh, there are, in Morocco we had uh, many falls, and since 2004, um, the fall of the Ben Gurion meteorite, all Moroccan falls. We had the privilege to do the field work, to do the classification, and to do the submission of all falls. And they all have a Moroccan name and a very good documentation. So when there is a fall that uh, is reported to us in Morocco, we organize a field mission and we go to the field and we collect all information about the fall. We collect samples and then we do the analysis and then we do the submission with the Moroccan name. This is the latest uh, falls that occurred in Morocco last year on 2019. Uh, uh, so, we did the same, we collected the samples, we do the classification and we do submission. And when it was accepted by the nomenclature committee, our university did uh, uh, 
press release to uh, inform uh, the Moroccan people about those youth rights. And so uh, it was, uh, we named uh, them Wad al that uh, occurred on, uh, uh, on June uh, 2019, and al that occurred in the very, uh, not far from this area, and it was on August from the same year. And both of them are ordinary contracts. So to summarize, in Morocco, those are all uh, faults of Morocco. You have uh, them in the, in the map. And um, since Ben Gerer, all those right now we have uh, uh, a big number and all those nitrites in this area we had the privilege to work on and to make it uh, to make it official with official uh, Moroccan name. It's our team that make this uh, work, and we are very proud of this. Um, so, what is the strategy that we adopted uh, in Morocco? Uh, so, as I said, uh, for twenty years. Uh, we promote sci first scientific research with the PhD thesis. We have uh, five PhD theses that has been already defended on the on this uh, topic in Morocco, and now there are seven uh, PhD that are uh, ongoing. Uh, we have plenty of publications in uh, in. Uh, uh, journals, uh, the, in specific journals. Uh, we created a network of um, uh, a camera network to uh, see, to try to, to collect the trajectory of meteorites in Morocco. It's in uh, partnership with uh, Curtin University in Australia and uh, Qadiyad University in Marrakech and Al Akhawi University in Iran and other partners. And this is to try to collect the maximum of information about phones. And we did all, as I said, the submission of all latest phones. We also uh, did the big work about on the academic formation. Uh, we created a cosmochemistry course uh, in the bachelor degree and uh, we do a lot of communication uh, uh, in the for the scientific lectures for the in, at universities but also to the large public and all this is to promote meteorites and meteoritics and planetary science and meteorites from Morocco and we go to go to the children we go to a lot of um, the, to to disseminate science, and we created a Tariq Foundation. I will talk about it very quickly after. Uh, we worked a lot on communication, uh, newspaper, radio, uh, TV, etc. Uh, we work on uh, scientific communication also. This is, uh, we had the cover of uh, Meteorite Magazine uh, with the t Sint Meteorite. Um, this is not a scientific communication, it's uh, for uh, mostly for collectors. We organized uh, many meetings, uh, many international meetings, and uh, we are very proud of the organization of the Arab Impact Criterion and Astrogeology Conference that we had uh, organized on 2011 and uh, in 2014. And in 2014, we also organized uh, a very important event. It's the 77th annual meeting of the Meteoritical Society. And it was uh, very successful because we had uh, 420 participants from all over the world and 40 researchers from NASA that attended this meeting. And uh, then it was followed by uh, excursion. And uh, it make uh, Morocco uh, well known by the by the scientists that are working on meteorites coming from Morocco and uh, that no, don't know about Morocco. Um, we also uh, represent Morocco in the Meteoritical Society. The Meteoritical Society is our society. 
uh, where we have all people that are interested, we're only researchers interested by meteorites, meteorites and impact craters. And we have been, I've been a member of the nomenclature committee for two uh, periods and now I've been member of the Council of the Meteorological Society. So Morocco is very well represented and very well known and it has a specific position uh, in, uh, in the Meteorological Society. So to promote more uh, the meteoritics. Uh, we created a Tarek Foundation for Meteoritics and Planetary Science. Uh, this uh, foundation is to promote meteoritics and also to disseminate science uh, for all Moroccan, but it's also open uh, to all. Uh, we have members from all over the world, from US and from other from Arab countries, from African countries. So I invite you to go to the website and you can, if you are interested, you just uh, fill the join us form and uh, you can be part of uh, this uh, foundation. So I already talked about the MUFID, Moroccan Observatory for Fireball Detection. Uh, we created with a colleague from France the Africa Initiative for Planetary and Space Science in 2017 and this is to promote uh, all kind of uh, planetary science in uh, Africa. So we have a lot uh, of um, uh, interact interaction with many societies, meteorological society, uh, geochemical society, etc. Um, we are endorsed by those societies. Um, so to summarize, uh, if we go to the all um, Arab countries, where we have uh, a very big number of meteorites. We have uh, interesting number of faults, we have interesting number, number of impact craters, but uh, this, those numbers may be increased and what is important is that we should have more uh, researchers uh, interested by uh, these topics to promote uh, these topics in uh, our universities in the Arab countries. This is not difficult to do, uh, for uh, geologists that have a very basic knowledge of uh, mineralogy and petrology, uh, it's very easy to, to work on uh, meteorites, and, but we should only be uh, interested on. Uh, so what uh, I would recommend, uh, summarize and recommend, uh, so in Morocco, uh, the result of the strategy that we implemented for 20 years is an international scientific recognition. Uh, we have a scientific production of uh, high quality with international standard. We have community of young researchers on planetology. We have Moroccan citizens aware of the, this geo heritage. We have new regulation in Morocco. This uh, regulation protects, it's a very smart regulation. I may take, I may talk about it after if you are interested. Um, so, and we created a Tarek Foundation and AFIPS. And so we invite uh, and call to, this is an invitation and a call to all Arab geologists to invest in planetary science. Uh, we have the same tools, the same expertise used for terrestrial rocks. Uh, we recommend to include cosmochemistry courses in the in curricula. And we recommend also to build research groups on the topic uh, by a Tarek Foundation if it's possible. And of course, we are ready to share and help by sharing the Moroccan expertise, experience to all people that may be interested. The the future for me is all these young people uh, and we are very happy with uh, to, to, to have, um, I'm very proud of my PhD students and uh, all the people that are uh, working at Tarek Foundation. We do a lot of uh, outreach for children in all over Morocco and uh, 
in very uh, far parts of the of the, the country and uh, this is something that we are very happy with when you have uh, very very uh, young children that have their eyes uh, uh, interested by uh, extraterrestrial rocks so uh, uh, we are trying to make meteoritics uh, uh, encouraging the scientific uh, background of uh, Moroccan people. So uh, not only for meteoritics, but, on, but for all uh, other uh, science uh, aspects. So um, thank you so much for uh, your um, generous listening and uh, we have a scientific responsibility for the preserva uh, preservation